Happy Halloween, guys. Hopefully the video actually uploads on Halloween. But anyways, House of the Devil. It's a 2009 movie from director Ty West. Ty West uh, directed the movie X, which I gave a very favorable review. It was a great FU to uh, elevated horror. And now the prequel Pearl is out, and I've heard pretty much nothing but rave things about that as well. And apparently there's a third one underway right now. As a Connecticut resident, I love Ty West. And a good chunk of this film, House of the Devil, was actually filmed in Kent, Connecticut. In fact, the scene with the best friend in the beginning is filmed at Kent Pizza, right around the corner from where we went camping last year. Really freaking cool. This film is very, very simple, like, conceptually. It, it doesn't break any really new barriers. I mean, that's kind of not the point of the whole thing, honestly. In the late 2000s, you had sort of, like... A lot of nostalgic type films like, you know, Grindhouse, for instance. And those were a tribute to like the trashy underground 70s movies and shit like that. But they were kind of done in like a modern style. Like they put a filter on it and it was like very deliberately cheesy and shit like that. House of the Devil is really like the perfect tribute to the 70s satanic horror film atmospherically, musically, the, the entire vibe, the look, the feel, the styles of everything, even the girl that they got to, to play the main character, I don't know her name, but I will put it on the bottom here. She was very, like, timeless looking, you know what I mean? She looked like a chick who could have been alive in the 70s. She gets this new apartment, and it seems like a dream come true. The landlord is like this sweet old lady, played by Dee Wallace, who basically cuts her like this huge break. She's got like three days or something like that. And she doesn't quite have that money. So she's kind of desperate. And on the college campus that she lives, she notices like a little billboard for a babysitter. She takes the thing off, inquires about the job, and the dude just sounds sketchy and, and inevitably kind of just ghosts her. Later on, she gets a call back from the same person and she's kind of like, understandably like, all right, well, F you, you know, kind of a thing. He's like, no, 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 this is, this is very important. The other babysitter didn't work out. And the voice sounds like polite, but like very nervous. Her best friend, uh, you know, tries to advise her against the whole thing. Like, no, screw these people. They already ghosted you. But still agrees to give her a ride to the house. The house itself, I believe, was also in Kent, Connecticut. So that's really where the bulk of the movie was shot. And then when they get there shit unfolds right off the bat things are just off there's more responsibility that she has that they kind of throw at her last minute and to her credit she takes full advantage she's like okay well you ghosted me and now last second you're telling me that this is gonna be a whole other thing so i want like double the double amount that you pre were prepared to give me and i mean the the guy reluctantly agrees to give her the money by the way, the guy who answers the door, the uh, patriarch, I guess you could say, of the, the house is Tom Noonan. You might know him from like the beginning of The Last Action Hero or from Robocop 2. Kind of a creepy guy, um, but he has that like soft-spoken voice and he's also like a million feet tall. I don't know how tall he actually is, but it his height is pretty freaking freakish, especially compared to the girl. Like The Innkeepers, this movie really does have a slow build. I mean, by the end, it's insanity, but like it starts out very subtle and most of it is actually very suspenseful. It isn't until the latter half of the movie that you really start like understanding like, oh shit. I mean, something's off from the beginning, but like you don't actually like start to see what it is until much later in the film. Nothing really like crazy original or anything like that. Like I said in the beginning, all it's ever meant to be is just like a perfect tribute to a 70s movie. You literally can't tell that this film was made in 2009. I'm deadly serious. If, if you didn't preface that to anybody, like, and you just showed them that movie and they'd never seen or heard of it, they would not question for a second that it was made in the 70s. I am going to get into spoilers. Uh, short story, I really, really enjoyed this movie. It's a really cool, like, kind of underground horror film. And to those who haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it. But now I'm getting into spoilers, so if you have not seen it, tiptoe out now. Three, two, one. So essentially, the family 
it's like this creepy woman, there's the Tom Noonan character, and then there's like a younger guy who is the pizza delivery guy, but he's really just part of the cult, that have this girl like, you know, isolated. Oh yeah, and the creepy grandmother, that's what it is, that she's supposed to be babysitting, is staying up in the attic. This grandmother that nobody sees, you know, that nobody knows anything about. And as it turns out, there's like, um, some sort of an eclipse that's happening that night that only happens once every, you know, I don't I remember if it was like 800 or like a thousand years, whatever the hell. But they're basically like a Satanistic cult. They're like acolytes of the devil. And they want to perform a ritual to impregnate her with essentially the Antichrist. That This has been done a million times before, you know, like Rosemary's Baby, even like Lords of Salem and shit after the fact. I mean... A woman becoming pregnant with the devil's child is nothing new in, in horror. But again, this movie's merit is not in its originality. It's not terribly original. It's in how it is done stylistically. Even the gore. There's a decent amount of blood at the end of the movie, but, like, the color looks like a 70s horror film. I mean, down to every meticulous detail. And if you can imagine... All right, for those of you who've seen the movie X out there, Ty West, okay, how meticulous to detail this guy is in everything that he tries to do, you can just imagine how good this movie probably is. So if you've seen X and you liked it, you should absolutely 110% drop what you're doing right now and find House of the Devil and watch it. Watch it this Halloween. It's, it's a good one. It was just kind of a special thing being a Connecticut resident, so that's why I wanted to save this for the last video. But um, yeah, House of the Devil, you should definitely check it out. And till next year, that's all she wrote. Or is it?